This, is, of course, is the squared circle. Saturday Rock. On the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Justin Greenberg. I'm joined with Dominic Arbolino and Joe Ritter. we got a special hour program today. We're going to cover WrestleMania. We'll cover the whole weekend, though, NXT Hall of Fame. we got some uh, raw previewing for tonight and some speculations. But let's start with the Showcase of the Immortals, which started at 5 o'clock very, very long show. Very Some people long know show. it ended at 12, what, 12? 12.30, I give it. Uh, 12.15, just about, right? It's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. All right. Seven so, hours. So the pre-show, I don't know how much you guys really watched of it. I watched the whole thing. I worked, and I was watching. I watched the whole thing. So. I was watching on my phone at work. You know, so. it's kind of just a lot of replaying the packages uh, that you'll see later on in the show. So I wasn't really paying attention. I was with my buddies, and, you know, we had the uh, Yankee game on, and we also had the Masters on as well. So our attention wasn't really on, uh, you know... Focused on the pre-show. Yeah, it wasn't focused on Renee mm-hmm. Young speaking. But we once the matches started, we really, you know, started to get into it. And the first match that took place was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And this was a cluster F, if I've ever seen one. Uh, you didn't get any introductions to any of the characters, yeah, any of the wrestlers. That was really weird, and it really didn't make sense. I mean, you kind of just had, I remember beforehand, it was like Carmella came on the mic to talk with Renee Young, mm-hmm. Booker, and whoever else was there, Otunga, and then just right after that, you saw all of them in the ring, and you're like, hmm, when did that happen? Yeah. Which just means, obviously, that they all just walked out, which you saw in the Women's Battle Royal, which we'll get to, but you know, I feel like they just all walked out. There was no introductions, so that was kind of weird, but I guess you know, they're... You know, they realized it was going to be a jam-packed match, so they kind of had to get to the point. I mean, couldn't they have cut some of the pre-show babble instead of... Oh, showing- of course. Can I say one thing also, really quick, and I'll get off this? It's WrestleMania. My uncle said this perfectly. My uncle Solo said this perfectly. We- everyone is watching WrestleMania, knows what's going on. That's why we're watching WrestleMania, because we've been watching these things happen. Why do we need video packages? Why? I get to set the stage up and such, but we really don't need them. We don't need a five-minute package about why AJ versus Shinsuke or why Brock and Roman. Or, I don't need it. Are you talking about on the main show you don't want that? No. That's ridiculous. I, I think do not want video packages at all. That's stupid. I, I think don't want th- any video packages. And also, this stupid page trail. Hi, page here. I don't care. Show the trailer, get over with. I don't need a whole monologue. Show it, get it over with. Well, that's more so just of the commercial they that's have. That's just me. I just I want to get to the action. Show me the wrestling. I don't need this job. I, I love watching the entrances. The entrances are the buildup for the match for me. I don't need a video package that I watched live. I, I don't think need the it. video package is some of my favorite stuff in WrestleMania history. If you go back and watch The Rock and Austin at WrestleMania 17, they had Limp Biscuits, My Way or the Highway playing on during it. And even during WrestleMania 19, Austin versus The Rock, they had another Limp Biscuit song, a lot of Limp Biscuit. Uh, but my thing is, I, like, I, love, I it, love the music before it, it's great, man. I, I like actually the video package, just to be honest. I think the problem with this year, again, is just that there was too many matches on the card. I, I'm really not going to blame the video packages for it. I can understand reasoning as why you would want them removed. I guess, you know, it takes up five minutes, depending, because think about it, how many matches were on the card, you know, you times that by five, and think about that, like, think about the timing that way. But I think, you know, if the card was just smaller, everything would be fine. I, I think this card was just overpacked. It's just trying to pack too much talent on a show, and it's, it's honestly, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it ruined it, because I would say, I actually enjoyed the first I don't know, however long you want to say it was Until pretty much the ending Like the last three matches is kind of what killed it for me I'm I mean, going to be honest The only reason I say it is just for me It's like, if you're going to show video packages Maybe in the beginning of the show Show a video package for Roman versus Brock Don't show me a video package for Ali versus this guy Don't show me a package for the Roll- Rollins, Miz, and Balor Right before it happens Maybe how about this, show me a package for the match after For Flair and Oscar to say Hey, we still have more coming But here's the match you're about to see Right now is this So people still know, hey, this is coming up But right now we're going to see this. And now you're excited for the next match while also going, oh, man, now we're going to see this. I think it's just a better way to do it. That's just Mm -hmm. me. So let's get on to this. I I don't agree, but let's move on. Matt Hardy won this. And there was no surprise entrance because they've done these Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royals maybe like four or five times. And they've always had guys appear, whether it's Diamond Dallas Page appeared one year. Tatanka was there. Shaq was in one of these guys. Uh, They had nobody. No surprise entrance. No returns. No Samoa Joe. No Big Cass, and you know, I think 
once I realized who was in this, I had a feeling Matt Hardy was going to win it. He's the only like, guy who's over at this point. I feel like there was still a surprise, though. Because, uh, I mean, at the end, you had Bray Wyatt come back, and he kind of... woken. Yeah, he's woken now. He looks like he's joining the Hardy compound, which I really like, to be honest with you. It, you know, it gives uh, Bray Wyatt something to do. He'll have, like, almost the same character, but he's almost going to be, like, a face now, because he's going to be with Matt Hardy, and I think, going forward, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this. But, you know, once, you know, you had the last three guys in there, which was Baron Corbin, Mojo Rawley, and Matt Hardy, you kind of knew Matt Hardy was going to win it, because... Mojo and Baron Corbin already won. I mean, yes, they can have, you know, two Battle Royal champions. But again, I mean, this doesn't really mean anything. This is it's really just a way to pack more talent onto the card that's not needed at all. It means nothing. They they say, oh, it it puts you into the stratosphere and puts you on the, 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 the rise to the WWE. Baron Corbin won. He did nothing. Mojo, Mojo did won. He's done absolutely nothing. nothing. This means nothing. Maybe Hardy could did change Did you hear, that, by though. the way, during this match... The utter destruction that the crowd went through with Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder got a little bit of something going on. The crowd went nuts with the woo woo woo, and then he got destroyed by Mojo. And you heard the crowd go, "Oh, yeah!" I saw that coming from a mile away. You saw Mojo of get course. up a little bit in like the right side of the camera angle, and then I was but just like, "Here comes sad. Mojo." It's still sad. This guy, people Whatever. still like him. It's it, sad. But you know what? I'm glad Matt Hardy won because honestly, out of all the guys that were in this, Matt Hardy was the only one that really pushed himself in it with this whole the great number eight wonder giant enormous thing that he was doing on Twitter and everywhere. He kind of made it in, not as the Andre the Giant battle, uh, battle whatever it is. The, you know what I mean. He made it into his own. He made it his own thing and it's cool to see that. I think it's really cool that he turned it into his thing. I think the right guy won. Well, let's move on to the second match. Cedric Alexander defeated Mustafa Ali. This was the tournament final for the vacant WWE Cruiserweight Championship. And speaking of that, uh, I b- believe Enzo has been uh, cleared. That's the rumor going around. He was cleared of charges, yeah. I personally, I still don't think he's going to be back. He's no, a he cancer won't. for the locker room, so that guy will never be back. But looking at the cruiserweight match, obviously we all know I'm probably one of the biggest fans of 205 Live here. I'm very happy that Cedric Alexander won. I'm finally happy that you know he got his shot and he was able to you know conquer it. But at the same time, I feel like you know they weren't really given enough time. I still think they could have put on a ten times better match than they did last night. They have before, so I think it's just unfortunate that they didn't really, you know, put up the best match. But I'm still happy with the outcome. The crowd was not really into this, from well, what I noticed. Yeah, I mean, I think really because again, you've seen this match before. You actually seen it twice, and both of those matches were better than this one. So, and here's another reason why I think they were not into it. It's they're both baby faces. Yeah. And every time, every once in a while, that's fine. You have your Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. The crowd's into it for fifty fifty split. But even a match we'll get later on, AJ versus Shinsuke, which I think is going to evolve into something great, uh, it had no heat between it because, you know, they're friendly with one another. Same thing with Charlotte and Asuka. It, I wasn't a fan of it. Uh, this match, you know, they're super talented wrestlers. But, again, I don't think the New Orleans crowd was really into it. And it's such a big venue, and you don't really hear the sound. If this WrestleMania was in, like, a Madison Square Garden, or, uh, you know, a Philadelphia Spectrum, or just one of those smaller venues, I think the the crowd noise would have been so great. I don't think... What do you think was the biggest pop of the night? Was it Ronda maybe getting in there and Um, with the tag? No, it was Mm. probably The Undertaker. Uh, the Undertaker, people went nuts, and no, Daniel Bryan actually. Daniel Bryan, blew well, yeah, that, the, blew that, the roof that's off always the place. gonna be. Yeah, but even still, it definitely got the biggest pop. Him, yeah. Undertaker, and honestly, and sadly, Rusev. But we can get into Rusev later. All right. So first, oh, first of all, let's just say the first two matches pretty solid. Uh, you know, even though it didn't have heat, it was good in ring stuff between yeah. Cedric and Mustafa. And I liked the ending of the uh, battle royal. I thought, you know, the right, like I, we said, the right guy won, and he had an interesting story with Bray Wyatt. Match number three. This is when things. Things took a little bit of a dip. Naomi won the first ever 20-woman battle royal, uh, and you win a trophy, apparently. There's actually been a Divas battle royal before yeah. at WrestleMania, but they like to ignore that. This trophy that. also looks like something that I'm not going to say over It does. Air, it looks like a, a female something. Yeah. Uh, this match was, was really bad as far as the entrances go. Dom, if you want to take that, what was the deal with this? Well, first to start out, you only had Becky Lynch, Bailey, and Sasha Banks do entrances, which is kind of disrespectful to all the other women that were in the match because they all just came out together. So that was my first problem. Again, it's like a flesh back to the Royal Rumble with them rolling out constantly. I don't understand why they keep doing that. And then the third problem I have with it is that at the end 
You have Sasha and Bailey, and look, I don't care that Sasha got eliminated by Bailey. I honestly expected it, but you can at least have more like heat between them and have them battle it out than just have Bailey throw her over, and then Naomi comes out of nowhere. And Naomi, when has she been relevant other than at SummerSlam? She's been bad since. Yeah, I just wanted to put in that Naomi has nothing. That she, that she's giving herself momentum towards. She's not like she's going to go for a championship. She will not beat Charlotte or an Oscar. It won't happen. She's not beating a Nia Jax or an Alexa Bliss. This has done nothing for her. If you had, I will say it, an NXT person that there were quite a few, and they put on probably the only good showing of, the, of that entire thing, like a Peyton Royce who was in there, yeah, someone new and fresh. You now give someone who's new and fresh some sort of momentum, going, "Hey, guess what? You have something now." Or even anyone, Bailey, Sasha Banks. Becky Lynch, who they just threw out like it was nothing. Yeah. I don't understand. They didn't even call attention to Becky Lynch being thrown out. Me and my friend were like, oh, Becky Lynch is on the floor, and so is Naomi. And apparently Naomi wasn't thrown over. Right. Exactly. She probably either went through like the second rope or she just rolled out and it was never eliminated. And you're looking like, at stupid. so stupid. And you're looking at the two of them, and all you hear is, oh, Becky Lynch is, is eliminated. I didn't even see it. I did not even see her go over. All right, so none of us were a fan of this. No. Let's move to the actual main card, because all this was on the pre-show, which you could see on the network. On, uh, some of it was and also on USA. on USA from the 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock hour. Uh, so the first match was a pretty solid match. Seth Rollins defeated The Miz and Finn Balor. Really shocking Finn Balor did not come out as the demon. Yeah, I was actually what shocked. What was that about? I I'm thought, not. I thought, you know, once Seth Rollins came out, which is also a very cool entrance, but either way, and then The Miz came out, and I'm like, hmm. Hmm, why is Finn coming out last? You know, the demon has to come out. But no, it wasn't him. It wasn't Demon Balor. And to be honest, this was a good match. Either way, I really didn't mind who would win if The Miz kept it, which I didn't think was happening, obviously, because of his child. I would have loved it still. I love The Miz. Same with Balor and same with Rollins. I mean, we're just going to have to see what's going to happen between well, everything coming out the backlash. You know what it is? Is that the demon's undefeated. And the demon is a big attraction for Finn. And it's a thing that they build. You know, they build that the demon's coming out and the demon is this. And it really builds his matches. If you want to put, they want to push Rollins, obviously, because he is a, a solid performer. But you don't want to waste the demon, even though WrestleMania is the grandest stage of them all. Give Seth and Finn now a year long promotion and really build. Have him have a couple matches. Have Finn lose every match. And then, you know what? At WrestleMania next year, you can go, you know what? I'm coming out as the demon at Mania and I'm going to beat Seth. Seth. And you know, all right, this is going to be a good match. This is going to be awesome. And he'll probably win. I just think that's too long to keep a feud going because I personally think I don't, you know, I don't think Seth Rollins is going to keep it the full year. I mean, does he deserve it? Yeah. And also, by the way, if you would have told me last week that Seth Rollins needed this to be a Grand Slam champion or whatever, I would have picked Rollins. I didn't even realize that because he's now, you know, with Randy Orton, John Cena, and everybody else. He's the else. last person of the Shield to get mm-hmm. the Grand Slam, too. So I, I actually had no clue about that, and I totally would have picked Rollins if that was the case. Yep. Yeah, I, I think the match was fine. Uh, I would have rather have it just seen been a singles match between Balor and Rollins because they had some really good stuff on Raw last week. Uh, the Miz, I'm not really the biggest fan of his in-ring work, but he really carried this feud with his, you know, stuff on commentary and just the promos and whether it's Miz TV, which I, I, I'm not a fan of Miz TV has there ever really been a good Miz TV segment? I, I feel like now at the Miz yeah. Raj, it's stupid. But, you know, beforehand, it, it used Let, to be You good. know what? I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago when he had, like, the Miz Taraj, like, turn on him and all that stuff that went on. That was a pretty good Miz TV. He had, like, the Miz Taraj, like, fake, like, go against him. I wish him. it just went fully with it, with the Miz Taraj turn. I really thought it was real. And then, you know, they attacked uh, Balor and uh, Rollins, and you're like, well, that was pretty good. They sold me on it pretty well. Yeah, it was done well. All right, let's move on to the next match. Again, the champion coming out first because, uh, you know, the Miz didn't come out first, but usually the champion comes out last. And they yeah. didn't do this a lot. I don't know why. This was my favorite entrance of the night. Charlotte Flair was amazing. She looked beautiful. They put a clinic on these two. Yeah. Charlotte and, and Asuka put on a clinic of how to tell a story and wrestle really well. And I don't know if you guys know the story behind her entrance. It's mm-hmm. Triple H's entrance from WrestleMania 30, which was in New Orleans, where Charlotte was one of the girls that kind of took off the robe of Hunter. Along with Sasha Banks and Alexa and Bliss. And Alexa Bliss. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of coming full circle. And she had 
uh, the Nature Boys music in the beginning. It was oh, it was a spectacle. That was man. a way a flair should come out. That, that was, was awesome. that was a thing of beauty. And none of us had Oscar w- losing this match. I right? was honestly shocked. I really was, to be honest with you. You know, if there's one person to end that streak, it would be Charlotte. But let's be real here. I did not expect that no. to happen. None I of us did. Honestly, when you say that, if there was one person to end the streak, I really thought it would have been Ronda Rousey. I did not think Oscar was going to actually lose. And I know I've been saying a long time, I really want the streak to end. I think it will be better for Oscar as a character. I kind of. 